this weak, pathetic, so-called vester failed at life, blamed everyone for his problem, unable to deal with the issues of life. So this coward decided to take a black man, by the way, and was supposed to be, wanted to be a reporter, decided that, well, he can't deal with life, so he's going to take the lives of others and cry racism, homophobia, and whatever else he said. Uh, Vester killing this young woman, Alice, Allison Parker and Adam Ward, who, as far as we can tell, were decent people working hard. And this guy was so into racism, he has the same mindset, or had, now that he's gone, that those women had on that train in, in uh, Napa. When they were told to get off the train because they were loud and rude, and instead of apologizing, they cry racism because most black people think because they hate white people, they think all white people hate them, and so they blame their failure on racism. This is all this car was done. But anyway, I want to read a little bit more from, uh, more from his manifesto, and it will tell you a lot about him. He says, yes, it will sound like I am angry. I am, and I have every right to be. But when I leave this earth, the only emotion I want to feel is peace. The church shooting was the tipping point, but my anger has been building steadily. I have been a human powder keg for a while, just waiting to go boom. He's chronicled the tough times that he's faced, and he, including some financial crashes. And he says that he used to work as a male escort, but, quote, I am proud of it because he made thousands. He says, I tried to pull myself up by the bootstraps, but the damage was already done, and when someone gets to this point, there is nothing c that can be said or done to change their sadness to happiness. It does not work that way. Meds? Nah, it's too much. And then after the unthinkable happened in Charleston, that was it. And he says, yeah, I'm all effed up in the head. This is all due to anger that started in the home, I guarantee you. Look at, and we should look into that, see what he raised with his father and mother. What was his situation in the home as a kid? Because most of these, this anger issue start with the failure of the family and with the parents. And when that is not dealt with right in the proper way to show these young people how to overcome that, they go out into the world and there are many issues waiting for all of us in the world, challenges in life. And if you hear a bunch of race hustlers saying, well, you're black, so it's racism, you believe that kind of lie, and you start blaming someone else for your problems. Because you're black, this is why they're doing it to you, because you're black. And if you're a homosexual and people are not uh, accepting that lifestyle, uh, you, you start saying, well, it's because I'm homosexual. It's homophobia and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and this guy, all he did was blame on top of blame, and that's why he only got worse instead of getting better. we got to deal with the anger. It's so typical in life now, and as you're going to see in a minute, you have a godless man like Barack Obama and others blaming it on gun violence. The gun has nothing to do or had nothing to do with this guy buying a gun or however he got it, planning to take someone else's life is due to the failure of parents and the lack of understanding about anger in this country today. Anger is evil. You can't control it. You can't manage it. You have to overcome it because it works on your mind. It causes you to believe lies and it causes you to do things that you regret later, such as this guy did. He also posted the pictures yeah, he he took the video. Shooting. We're showing some of that he now. He took video with his phone and uh, tweeted about it, tweeted some more explanation, saying she made racist comments, and he even went to a HR on me and stuff like that. The manager of that station said that none of what this guy was saying was true. Yeah, he said that he was always looking for uh, things to be offended about. Right. And that is the typical mentality, and I'm sorry to say, but it is true. It's the typical mentality of the average black person today. When they're working with white people, they're constantly looking for something to be angry about. Never looking at themselves and saying, hey, let me get better. 
They're looking for something, someone to blame it on. And, and not just with blacks nowadays. So it with the, it's with the homosexuals, it's with the liberal women, and it's with blacks and some Hispanic. Yeah. It's with those protected groups that, that they have been told it's not your fault. It's because of who you are that you're being treated this way. Yeah. And life doesn't work that way. And even worse, well, to add to that, he uh, wasn't prepared to do good work. He didn't. Right. Like, so he was being criticized for doing poor work because of poor raising or poor education or whatever. So he didn't have the good habits. So it made life worse for him because he was being criticized. And the problem, because he was so in denial about himself and how to uh, deal with life, instead of appreciating them, hiring him anyway and trying to help him get him to where he should be, he blamed it on racism. He blamed it on this, his failure on them, rather than looking at himself. So he tweeted out, I filmed the shooting, sees Facebook. So it was just all thought out, all planned, just put together. And I, I guarantee you, the average black liberal reporter and some white liberal reporter, they're not going to tell the whole story. They're going to try to twist this, as Barack is already doing, blaming it on guns, blaming it on racism, and blame it on homophobia, homophobia. They're not going to say this was a psycho that did not know how to deal with life. He was a failure, and he just is his fault and no one else. That will not be said. 